right, everybody. Welcome to Stage Banter with Mr. P and Wrath from Wrath and the Wise Guys, Wrath and the Social Infants, No Vacancy Media. We are here with not Kaylee Denton, as it says on the screen, but Jay and the motherfucking Peck. Jay Peck from Colin Dead, Jay Peck from The Goners, Jay Peck from other bands I ain't fucking never heard of and don't give a shit about, Jay Peck with the long hair, Jay Peck looking for a band. You might want to hang out with him soon because he wants to do some shit now. Maybe he'll do some stage banter. <laughs> <laughs> all right so how you doing jay i'm good i'm good living in uh you know lovely not Christmassy florida where it's 80 wow. humid. It's, it's warm today up here in new york it's 48 degrees i'll trade <laughs> it's super I'm warm living in the new york part i'll just take the weather part down here all kinds <laughs> of rain and too warm for it to be snow but i still been lighting my fire in my wood stove every day what do you live you all got wood stoves in florida right Oh yeah! Oh yeah! You gotta keep it warm and toasty. I gotta. I keep a Dutch oven down here. That's so, man made. I think Dutch oven. There's a Dutch oven, and there's your Dutch oven. I'm not sure we're talking the same Dutch oven. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, I know Jay very well. Rath, you know Jay very well. For those of you that don't know, um, I, I've known Jay for man like a decade now. Yeah. Right? I was in a band uh, with him for like six years fucking love him um, a lot of this <laughs> show and the things i make fun of are based on jay's stage banter <laughs> in fact i think it's important that we start off with some of jay's stage banter oh no oh yeah yeah so i'm gonna i'm gonna play uh, <laughs> a, a little bit of jay's stage banter to uh to make sure you all just understand who it is we have on this show so here is uh, some stage. See how far you go back. That's what I want to see. Oh, I'm not going too far back. Oh, not yet. Oh. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to plan the right thing. Here it comes. There we go. <laughs> this is the new My first COVID show. No more people, just live stream shit. If I can guess every one of them. So, I listened to that today, and there were two things that caught me on it. One, you were doing stage banter during the song. <laughs> during the fucking song, you were doing stage banter. Yeah. Not before we started playing. Did three things. Two, you ended it perfectly right as the song was about to like really kick in. So you like did it well. And then you made it topical to what was happening. You know, we were doing a live stream during COVID, which wound up being um, you know, DCPC's first release. So I felt that was a unique bit of stage banter because it has none of the cliches, because I don't think anyone's talked about doing Facebook Live with source. Maybe it will be a cliche. Not pressed to to vinyl. Not pressed to vinyl. You that. <laughs> There's nobody yet who's talking about Facebook Live's pressed to vinyl except that one. Yes. I'm a trendsetter. <laughs> you are a trendsetter. <laughs> I'm, I'm cool. So, I know what you did in Colin Dead. When you were in the Garner and other bands, were you always the guy that did the stage banter or did other people do that shit? For the most part, yeah. Um, and it's funny is because I had way more of a loud mouth in the Goners and then like other bands I was in that didn't really would play like a show, play like somebody's garage or something. And it was I'd always just be the loud mouth because I've never been good at playing instruments. So and just started just getting on microphones in friends' bedrooms who were like, hey, you sing. I don't know how to sing. Well, tough, you're going to sing. So I'm like, OK. And then yep. just but I was always the guy who just was the loud mouth so those people can usually talk a lot of shit too so you know yeah it, it helps that you're from jersey so you bring the whole jersey <laughs> attitude i can hear the jersey <laughs> accent in that like uh <laughs> whole stage band we heard there it's like oh yeah he's from jersey also depends on how much i've had to drink too so uh, we were in an unair conditioned uh warehouse banquet hall oh. with no working bathroom so we were all fairly drunkish i miss josh dobbs's uh 
recording studio. It's funny. He's actually started taking <laughs> the studio to people homes now for their practice. Mobile. Mm -hmm. We just had him master our new record and he's fantastic. As, he as is, you know, he is absolutely fantastic. Oh, no. Everything he does is great. Yeah. yeah. It, one, one day when like DCPC is like a real thing, I'll hire him on as like my full time engineer with like a salary and, a, and benefits. <laughs> and, and then I'll make Steve my VP of production since Steve's always been part of DCPC too. And Sounds Jay, like you get a lot of nothing. You get nothing, Jay. Oh. <laughs> that when that first release comes, like a rare collector's on Discogs, you're gonna see it like sold by one guy and. <laughs> <laughs> The thousands of dollars on eBay. <laughs> that would be amazing. I would love that to happen. So funny. On that album, um, there, there's other stage banter it occurs, but it's not from you. Who else do you think it was from? Chris. Yeah. Hey, Chris. How would you how would you describe Chris's stage banter? The word motherfucker. <laughs> I, I always thought he was trying to be a WWE either wrestler or announcer. Yeah, no, I, I see that. But that's also that's where he comes from. I mean, that guy was pro wrestling through and through. Yeah. I mean, he was a wrestling. I mean, he still is a wrestling nerd. So, I mean, but it, I mean, it added to that because, you know, I, I enjoy that kind of. I mean, if you're going to own it, own it, man. I mean, especially, you know, you can read your room. That's why I always hated like the people who just go on and on and on and on and on and on and everybody's just standing there like, all right, shut the fuck up, motherfucker. Play your damn song. Who are you yeah. talking to? Was that Steve? Yeah. <laughs> when they start like, you know, telling you what they're gonna do that week and like, oh, I did laundry and this song's, you know, this is for the guys in the back and for the fucking bruises, and you know, I did my dishes tonight and I had uh chicken cutlets. <laughs> <laughs> and, and all that and you know pretty much any like 90s and 80s like stereotypical hardcore band you know the the 15 minute speech or anti-flag super cringe now but mm -hmm. yeah you know I, I feel like there's categories right like there's the ramones core counted in one two three four mm -hmm. there's the political punks like propaganda or 15 that just uh, want to talk about all their songs and explain the movement behind it the funny time I have to say about Propagandi, the one time I've ever seen Propagandi, which was here in Orlando, actually, um, barely any talking, and but it was phenomenal. But like I was shocked because I was like expecting like you know these like tirades about everything because like you see off, yep. and you hear like nothing. You don't even hear like what song it is. They just you know they start and they finish and they end. And Keith would say, but if you see the circle jerks. Mm -hmm. You get the whole story of, you know, oh, this song was written in 19, you know, 81, and it's about how much rich people fucking suck and this and that and everything. So, I mean, it's, well, it varies. I, I think that's important. Like, you're saying that the stage band, or even with the same singer, varies based on the, on the type of band it is. Not necessarily. I think also a lot of it has to do with reading your room. And some days, you know, you're just like, I mean, if you're on tour for, you know, six months out of the year and you're just like, man, I'm, like you said earlier, I'm missing birthdays, barbecues, celebrations, you just might not have it in you and just be like, fuck it, we're just playing the songs tonight and I'm going back out the door. And then some nights you might be like, hey. You know, that, that's interesting. You know, when we did the, uh, the the stage banter with uh, Gary Bennett, Kill Your Idols, Sheer Terror, mm -hmm. he, he talked a lot about how uh, Andy, Andy is a singer for Kill Your Idols, a lot of times will like just turn his back and let other people talk because he's putting out so much emotional energy in the song that he doesn't have anything else to give or say and he just needs a moment and other people like take over because he's just giving it all out there already verbally and he has another he doesn't know how to like form any other words yeah i mean a lot of guys do that too i've seen converge a ton of times and i've only ever heard jacob bannon say at the end of their set we're converged. We're from Boston, Massachusetts. Or like, oh, we're a punk band from Boston, and just very little, but nothing else. And that dude throws himself like a hundred and ten percent, like every show. So that's like falls under the like less talk, more rock. Yeah. 
And then there's like the rock and roll bands that just go on and on and do all the cliches. <laughs> Introducing band of. members. How y'all doing tonight sort of shit. Tip your bartender, Jay. Hey, I'm from this. I, I, I feel I haven't bartended in that a long time. I can't say I used to be a bartender anymore. Because I feel there's like a window. And it's been... 10 years so i think it's i think it's safe to say i can't say anyone but coming from service industry it's hard not to and plus if you can get a few free beers out of it or something <laughs> it's, I, you know, I didn't know that was possible i didn't thought about that i'm the drummer so i get to say shit like that did you ever get free beers from saying shit like that no no <laughs> <laughs> you know but like you being from jersey being close so so close to new york and i know you're a big fan of bands like seven seconds I'm surprised you never went off on like a unity tangent and like how we all needed to be brothers in arms and put our arms around each other and like feel the power of our punk rock hardcore brotherhood. No, I mean, I mean, that is insanely good and it needs to be there because especially nowadays and the tumult, I can't even say tumultuous times that there are um, being together and being unified, especially in the big area that is punk rock hardcore alternative music whatever you want to call it um but uh really you know it's it goes in the music for me but also i mean just sometimes again read your room like there's sometimes i just don't want to say anything and then there's sometimes i'm like oh you're 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 getting you're getting in the energy of this i'm gonna give back to you and back back and forth pretty much you keep saying read the room and i think that is such a such an art like, it makes you think of two things. First one off the top of my head was, like, driving around traffic circles. Uh, there are major traffic circles here where I live in New York now, double lane. And you can drive, and you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm taking the second exit. But there's another car to the right of me. And technically, they're supposed to take the second exit because they're in the right lane. But sometimes they don't. So you just kind of got to kind of watch. And you got to feel it. And, like, my daughter, who's going to drive in, like, a year, is like, how do you know? I was like, you just have to err on the side of caution. If you think they're not going to make the turn, you just keep your, you keep going straight and you just make go around the circle again. But you gotta, you gotta feel it. And then the other one is just the art of teaching. Like, Rath was nodding in uh, agreement. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's just, but how do you teach that? How do you get to know just the art of like understanding the room? Now you just have to feel it almost. There is no like, it's not like a teach or anything. I mean, like, and it's like you tell a joke if you say, I mean, everybody, I wanted you on the microphone forever just because you say funny and hilarious <laughs> shit. I think only a niche group of people find funny, but I still find it hilarious. And, um, but I mean, Wrath Wrath is being a front man. I'm sure you've said a dumb joke that fell, you know, 40 yards from making any sense. I know I fucking have a many, many times. And then you're just like, kind of take it back, you know, all right. But it's just all spur of the moment shit, too. I mean, you play a, shit, a set for 18 minutes, you know, it just, you, and you can kind of, if you see people running around in a room having a good time, you, know, you can throw, throw more shit at them. If you see everybody just standing around like... You know, it's, that's when you need to say throw some shit at them or just play harder. <laughs> or you do, and then they just stand there, and then I'm just like, all right, well, fuck you guys. I'm gonna have fun. You don't have to do shit. Well, that, that should always be there. It should all be about you having fun. Oh, 100 percent. Well, that's me opening another beer. You hear that sweet, sweet sound? That's the best stage <laughs> banter right there. Only right, it's liquid stage. It's just banter. beer. Liquid stage. This is not, so not beer. <laughs> all right, we're gonna take you back, sir. Oh no! So I'm uh, I, I'm gonna tell you the name of a song you're gonna play, and then I'm gonna give you the uh, the 10 second countdown. And at the you end of the 10 be... second countdown, you've got to talk for 30 seconds and introduce this song. Is this one of our songs, or is this somebody else's song? Uh, it's not <laughs> my song. Okay. <laughs> Certainly not my fucking song. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Uh, the name of the song is uh, Back to Basics. You know what band did that song? <laughs> no clue? All right. Yeah. It's this band called The Goners. I heard you were in that band like yeah. 10 years ago. No, I wrote, yeah, I wrote that. 
All right, you're, you're, you're all good then. You're going to be a nice introduction. Here's the countdown. All right, guys, hope you're having a good time tonight. Let's get this going, get a big circle pick going. Make sure you tip your bartenders. Ah! Hope everybody's having fun tonight. Make sure you're good to each other. We need a lot of unity in this punk rock community. This song's called Back to Basics. Let's fuck this room up. I like that unity in the community. That's how it's supposed to be done. I just thought we were going to mention all this all right that was played off of band camp did you know your shit was on band camp yes i do yeah i do remember not on Spotify. Camp. No, it never. We never put it on Spotify. I mean, it band kind of got dormant afterwards. I mean, I was like, I, pay for that, Eve. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> you know, the, the, the thing is, though, like Spotify. Like, I even have a whole bunch of downloads, and I never listen to them. So I have to. Go, I mean, Bandcamp. I have to go to the app and listen to them, and it doesn't flow easily. I, I, I've heard they're doing some sort of streaming thing now, but it's. It's literally not user friendly while I'm driving my car. No, yeah, green closes like the music shuts off or something. Because I used to try to listen to Bandcamp at work. Yeah, and my screen would close on the song, but what happened to the music? And and I and I guess I could download it to my phone. But man, I don't want to take up space on my phone with downloaded music. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's really annoying. Yeah, it was because I would love, although you know, I'm kind of not really happy with band camps like laying off a of half the motherfucking people. Yeah, they just got bought out by who was it like Epic Games? Yeah, or and something like that. I, I have bad people. thoughts, I have bad feelings about how all that's gonna end up. Yeah, it's oh. it, it's such a problem, like. Yeah. I, I don't even know how a band does anything anymore besides fucking selling t-shirts. No, I, that's it. It's, I hope physical media and I hope streaming takes a tank. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, directors are talking about, especially because they don't own, you know, anything that they make. The studio owns, and so if you, you have to buy physical media, or you're going to lose it. Like, it, this it, stuff is going to disappear off the internet one day because somebody, I mean, because they can do whatever they want. yeah. Right. And here's here's the problem. When I, when I was in the overprivileged, we sang songs about the destruction of the centralized distribution model, and we extolled the virtues of what the internet could do. Mind you, this is like in two thousand one, right? Mm -hmm. And we had a uh, media player on our website, not only for our songs, but we had one for all the bands we loved that we didn't get permission to do, and you could stream those songs, and they played. I mean, we're just, I mean, actually, no, my guitarist is pretty fucking brilliant. Um, <laughs> and he designed the page so that you could stream, like, before streaming was a thing. And he was streaming shit off our website, and you could download it. And I was like, oh, this is going to be so great. I don't have to, like, go to any fucking record company. People can download my shit, burn it to a, to a CD, or, and then play it in their car. It'll be amazing. I don't ever have to worry about, like, anybody getting my stuff. It'll just be there. And I didn't have a problem with that. Yeah. But I was in control of it. Now I'm not in control. It's actually re-centralized again under like Spotify or Bandcamp or Deezer. Who the fuck uses Deezer or iHeartRadio or any of that other shit, by the way? What sucks is, honestly, I wish people would use Deezer only because it's supposed to be, they, they have the highest quality. Like sound? Yeah. So, yeah, they're I the only ones I who do it completely uncompressed, but... I mean, I, I only need to listen to so much shit on so many different platforms, right? I don't want to bounce around a thousand times over. Yeah, no, I'm I'm the worst. I use YouTube, to be honest, so I give my money to Google. You do YouTube music? Yeah, but they also pay more than Spotify, so I, I, I try to justify it like that. 
Deezer pays the most too. So that's another reason people should use that. But I've never heard of Deezer. And the only thing I associate with, associate with iHeartRadio is like the Green Day smashing the guitar. <laughs> that was fucking yeah. awesome. Oh, <laughs> one, one minute. Classic. And, so is smashing your instruments a form of stage banter? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. If that's the case, particularly when I was in the overprivilege, that was pure stage banter. <laughs> You know, I used to pick up my floor comment and literally throw it at the audience. Nice. Chrome played it, by the way. Stage banter. Stage banter. And that, that's <laughs> <something> just <laughs> with, with a floor tom. I remember one time we were playing a show and I was wearing some fairy wings. And it was a show with like painted black <laughs> and Western addiction. And for whatever reason, I wound up sitting backwards on my drum set sitting on my bass drum playing backwards i didn't have any rack toms because it was a band that just very simple and i'm playing and then my guitarist was pissed at me and started hitting me with his guitar his 69 sg bashing me with it and then i got all pissed off and i picked up my bass drum and i rammed it at him and knocked him off the stage and well we had to take him to the hospital later but is that stage banter what the fuck? That just sounds like a fight. I'm, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> but I wasn't angry. Like a, it sounds like, sounds a, like a party up squabble you, like, between, a documentary. between Neither one Fred. of us are angry. We we hit each other with the instruments, and then we didn't finish the set, and then walked <laughs> outside, and then band was over. <laughs> it sounds like a, like a band documentary. His knee like, was a little band. hurt. His guitar was a little broken-ish. Or his 69 SG, who cares? <laughs> I had a band oh, member God. take a shit in the middle of a set, like actually get up, go to the bathroom, and come back. That's stage banter. Oh, uh, Wesley stage. Willis did something like that. He went off stage, and then he came back, and everyone was like, what's going on? He was like, sorry, my dick had to take a piss. <laughs> and so we recreated that in Chicago. Here's here's Rock and Roll McDonald's. <laughs> yep. Here's I, uh, I, I know when I played the uh, sidebar in Baltimore, I ran out the backstage where the bar was and then I came back around again and came in through the front door like during like it was tuning or something I'm not even tuning I just fucking did it might have been mid-song I don't remember I'm not even sure I was wearing clothes <laughs> is nudity oh, stage banter? because if nudity is stage banter I also did a lot of that it's nudes that's a statement I definitely say it's a statement it's a statement <laughs> fat fuck <laughs> gets like to get naked. God, I'm so glad there was no video cameras back then on people's phones. Yeah. Yes and no, because I do I do wish there's a lot of stuff that I wish people would have filmed that didn't get filmed. So now it's just like urban legend. Yeah, I mean just for myself personally. <laughs> Oh <laughs> yeah, and I mean, there, there's a lot of shit people won't believe because they didn't film it, but maybe that's for the best. It, it might be for the best. <laughs> yeah, it was like legendary be. shit, right? That was like, oh, no one saw this, but like, no one recorded this, but this is what everyone heard happened. But I'd, I'd rather just be that legend. You only hear this after a couple of beers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> kind of stories. <laughs> He'll tell it, but you have to give him a couple beers or a shot of Jameson or something. <laughs> so, Rath, are you ready to um, to play Ooh. the next game where he has to guess who the band was? Uh, yeah. This did, this one's, did you, did, did this one's kind of up my alley. It's up your alley? Did, did, did if you, you want me to... Me? You huh. can do whatever you want. You could do it straight, or you can try and <laughs> impersonate the person. Uh, it's up to you. I it's mean, fun impersonating this person, though. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, that's all right. All right, Jay, you uh, got to try and guess who, who the stage uh, manager is. I always suck at Johnny on the spot. Like I'll hear it and I'll know it, and then I'd be like, I don't know what that is, and then you'll say it and be like, mother, and I'll like name the album and all this sorts of other stuff. You know what's funny is I'm sitting here. I don't know if it's off the album behind me, but I'm sitting. I've got vinyl out right now, a live album of this band. So. I was I was already prepped. You're already prepped. I'm a and, little I'm a little prepped. And, and I get being on this spot. I was on a cruise once, and I was killing the cartoon theme songs. 
owning that fucker. And then I went up against like this 12 year old for a final go round. And then the song came on. I'm like, oh my God, I know this, but I can't think of it because I never actually fucking watched the show. But all my students did. It was fucking like Pokemon or whatever or Dragon Ball Z. Oh, oh. <laughs> And I'm like, God damn it. But I got them all. I mean, I was owning that shit. I got the Jets and they had the Flintstones. I had shirt tails even. Fucking shirt tails. <laughs> I mean, I was going deep. Uh, that's a deep cut. You know, Space Goes Coast to Coast. Got yeah. it. That's not a cartoon. That's not like a kid's cartoon, though. Or is this cartoons in general? Still a cartoon. Cartoons. <laughs> no, it's still a cartoon. <laughs> Hong Kong Fu, I got that shit. Yeah. I was like, I and, and my wife was so disappointed in me. <laughs> oh, dude, I when we did summer camp and call in dead, and someone asked me about the lyrics for it, I'm like, did you ever watch Camp Candy? And they're like, what the fuck is that? And so I had to explain. First off, I had to explain uh -oh. who John Candy was, which they didn't know who John Candy was. I'm like, the guy from, and I would say Uncle Buck, but I was like, the guy from Home Alone, the polka guy. And they're like, oh, I'm like, yeah, he made a cartoon show on Saturday mornings back when they used to show cartoons. So it was a very long explanation. So yeah, because they didn't even know. Like, I was in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles would be my, you know, Uncle Buck, Planes, Trains, and Automobile. Lots of good he, like, he was the he was the early Chris Farley, and I don't. Oh, I guess yeah. that's kind of rude because I'm saying that because he's a fat, funny guy. <laughs> God, I'm an asshole. Yeah. All right, that's yeah. fine though. When, when, whenever you're ready, Rath. You All can, right. You Honestly, can I'll be kind of disappointed if you don't. If I do this right, and you don't get it after the first two words, yeah, I'll be kind of disappointed. Prepare to be disappointed. <laughs> All right, I gotta, I gotta get in the zone here. Get uh, you down. Get the zone. Pimp out don't the. Pull, don't pull a hamstring. Pimp out. Pimp out the tattoo. I can never. Oh. I can never do this right. Look, there you go. Everybody. Look. Oh, see, it's not. Now it's blurring out. <laughs> okay. I always just want to pimp out my Scott tattoo. Ah, I, I still <laughs> need I my. Get it on camera. I, I thought I was going to get it for Christmas, and no one got it for me for Christmas. So it's very disappointing. <laughs> I know. We'll make that happen. That was my Christmas goal is get my wrath tattoo. I got a <laughs> spot on my arm. I'm saving for it. I know. My son got a switch instead. So, ah, Fuck your yeah. son. <laughs> well, I, it means I got a switch. Well, I don't know. Really <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, all right. Okay. All right, <laughs> all right Toronto! Where'd it go? <laughs> you feel good? All right, then listen. <laughs> what, what was that? Yeah, like Paul Stanley. There we go. Oh shit! Oh yeah, look it <laughs> up. <laughs> should, I, should I just keep it going, just for? Yeah, just finish it up, dude. Right. You know we may be on the clear blue skies, but it's gonna get a little cool out tonight. <laughs> but that ain't gonna stop us, because if we try hard enough, we're gonna get this place. I said we're gonna get this place. What? That's right. Higher than hell. <laughs> oh yeah. And, that's and that's a front man who loves to hear himself talk. Or is he even a front man? That noises. Is he? Uh, who's the front man of Kiss? Paul oh, Stanley. I'd say Paul Stanley, for sure. I always thought it was Gene Simmons. No, he, I, he, he just has he, this weird thing in his head. He's he's the outspoken one, definitely in that band. But I feel that Paul is definitely the like forefront of Kiss. Yeah, have you have you never seen them live, Scott? No. Oh, oh three yeah. Times in my life, I've tried to and failed. There is a great YouTube video that everyone's called "My Dinner with Paul." Oh yeah, we're gonna play that. Oh, <laughs> but first, I want everyone to hear how close Steve came to mimicking Paul. Oh, fuck. So it was so bad. I said we're going to get this place. How did it help? Uh, there was no All right, yeah. listen. There you go. I want to know if we got any people here tonight that like to get high. But that's not it either. Come on now. <laughs> What's wrong with you, YouTube? Why are you yeah, fighting that. me on this? There we go. 
Warren! Toronto! I should have done that. You feel good! All right, then, listen. You know, we may be under clear blue skies, but you know, it's getting a little cool out tonight, but that ain't gonna stop us, because if we try hard enough, we're gonna get this place. I said we're gonna get this place. Harder than hell. <laughs> Yeah, that's fucking Paul Stanley right there. I, uh, I feel I didn't do my job as a front man in a band now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wanted everyone to sound like fucking Paul Stanley. <laughs> yeah, holy shit. He, uh, Our set would have been a half hour or 40 minutes if I did speeches like that. Fuck. And I think that's part of the thing. So I'm going to... I've done. I've never done this before. But I'm uh, for those of you that are watching this on YouTube versus uh, just listening on the uh, what do you call it the streaming services that we just got done bashing. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and like share screen and actually show the video that we're all gonna watch because because uh, was JPEG mentioned my dinner with Paul and it's like 140 minutes. I'm sorry, one minute and 41 <laughs> seconds of awesomeness that just needs to happen. And so we're actually, I'm actually going to share the motherfucking screen There's so that we can all watch it because it's going to be that fucking great. 200 views on this video are for me showing people and people scratching their heads at me going, what the fuck is this? Or one or two people going, it's the best thing I've ever seen. It's the best thing I've ever seen. I watch it like weekly. It's my inspirato. <laughs> if you're having a shitty day, this will make it less shitty. My dinner with Paul! Alright, <laughs> 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 Are you alright? Yeah, I'm alright. I've just been thinking about stuff lately. Girls! I don't know, it's dumb. It's not really worth talking about. It. All right, then, listen. Girls, like to get licked. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about, Paul. Guys like to get licked. Yeah, I, I don't... Wait, what? You lick me, I lick you. <laughs> I'll give it all I got, you give it all you got. Uh, no. No, I'm not gonna... I'm gonna spend one night with you. No, you're not. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm licking it up! Stop with the licking. I'm not licking anything. Right. I'm gonna vomit on you. You're afraid to sing because you think the cool person next to you isn't gonna sing. Then you find out the cool person singing and you're not. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> You're a weird man, you know that? <laughs> fucking A. You're a weird it, man. It, but I've never seen a B continued, have you? No, I've never. <laughs> I think it's just it what should. it should. I feel like it would be pretty easy to do that. We should work on we should work on that, right? You, yeah. We should keep up with the beat. We, uh, the three of us should work on a beat continued. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Paul Stanley's intervention. <laughs> <laughs> I have the Kiss yeah. box set on CD, so there's plenty of stuff in there. <laughs> I've got a Kiss Alive 1 and 2 on vinyl. I do not have a Live 3 on vinyl. Oh, I used speaking. On CD in high school. That's what I have. Here you go. Yeah. Ball, ball blurred, but... uh. <laughs> Why is it blurred? Is like some sort of copyright people has, fucking us up? Power of the internet. I'm, I'm trying not to get sued. Uh, like you said, Gene Simmons. I don't want to fuck with that. Yeah, you know, I, I, I actually wonder if this is going to get like... No, nah, it was just stage banter. We didn't play any actual Kiss music, so we'll be okay. So I've gotten flagged before when I posted be okay. shit on like... Um, I hope you YouTube, get it. Because it was like samples of songs yeah. and stuff. And it's like sometimes bands have their shit like on copyright lock the motherfucking down. Yeah. It's funny because I have that issue when I like share like reviews and stuff of bands that I did. I'm like, why are y'all muting my track? I was like, I'm literally reviewing your shit. 
that you asked me to review, you dick asses. It's funny is I'll I'll watch skate videos. I love love skateboarding. Um, got into a lot of punk rock through skateboarding actually, and just a lot. No, of right? Never heard of that. Uh, right, <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of like um, channels that just have nothing but like old skate videos and stuff, and I'll just put them on on the background on YouTube if I'm like cleaning the house or something, and all of a sudden I'm like, where's the music? And like certain videos like and i'll be like man that was a great song i wish they didn't take that out of there and it'll yeah. like the song would be muted yeah i i i wrote a whole paper on that back in college about copyrights and i actually really hate copyrights i'm a big creative commons guy and mm. it really pisses me off how many things don't go into the public domain like think about every version of dracula you've ever seen from like dracula and scooby-doo cartoons mm. To like different movies, like it's just all everywhere because it's in the public domain. Mm -hmm. And imagine if other shit like was in the public domain. Like I love me some Spider Man, but Spider Man should be in the public domain now. All the Disney characters. every fucking Disney character yeah. should be in the public domain. Like Funny all the shit Disney should just be public movies. domain. And then let people's creativity take it somewhere. Because when you let the corporate masters control it, you get shit like what DC puts out. Other than the shit they do on HBO. Titans is fucking sick. I still need to watch it. Oh, it's fucking great. Great stage banter there. Great <laughs> stage banter. All right. So hold on. All right. I got to text my kid and see if she'll bring me a beer. Was that why? I, I don't did? know. Last time. <laughs> Last, Last time I called out is. for it. This time I'm just going to text her. I don't know where she what is. What we use technology for. Right. Well, she's got a new uh, Apple Watch now, so she can't ignore it because it like shows up on her fucking wrist. So she's got to. Like, <laughs> oh, she can still ignore it. No, nah, I'd have to fucking kill her. <laughs> <laughs> she yeah, she's a decent child. Oh, decent at the stage band. Well, actually, we'll find out. She's got a. Uh, she's playing the drum part now in uh, School of Rock. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. That's pop. fucking cool. And she oh, was wow. like, she she texted me. She went first in the drum audition. She said people came after. She's like, oh my god, they're better than me. I was like, yeah, but can they sing, dance, and act? They're like, no. It's like then you'll win. So yeah, she hadn't played drums in like a year. So we spent like a good like hour like rehearsing her like thirty seconds solo. She fucking killed it. Oh yeah, Fuck yeah, dude. That's okay. awesome. What's that? Okay. Okay. Perfect. Carrington or Evelyn? Oh, Carrington. Yeah, sorry. No, no. You're, Evelyn you're... plays the flute. Ooh. So like she's gonna be a fucking Jethro Tull or some shit, or like uh, do Peter and the Wolf. I can't think of anything else that Flautus do. Come in, child. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Start the Come party. in, child. Thank you, kiddo. Thank you. I'm in now. now. Now she's starting brownies and cleaning the kitchen. Y'all ought to get one of these. They're pretty good. I do, you know, I'm at the stage where my kid asks to help out, but he's not any good. She's like, can I go do this? And I'm like, no, I don't think you should do that. I mean, like, we'll, we'll spend the time learning it, but I got to That's what stage, man. We should all just talk about our kids on stage. Hey, Is that what yacht rock bands do to the talk about their like kids? Nobody wants to hear that. Everybody goes to shows <laughs> to get away from their problems. Yeah, like, yeah. Everything is like showing like photos of their kids on stage. Like, here's my kid. There was. I remember when I saw years and years ago the band Digger, and I'd never seen somebody bring a child, like a small child, to a show. And I like that I made it like that. But um, I think I'm second grade. <laughs> it was at like a place in like Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and I remember seeing the drummer put his kid on like one of the amps and he was like probably all of like three or four and he had the big cans on yeah. and played through a full show and then as soon as they were done he picked up his kid and just like went out the side door and was gone i was like "Ooh, wow. i'd never seen that before because i'd always thought i was like who would bring their kids to this shit because most shows <laughs> i went to were like crazy like shit thrown everywhere and just like loud fast bands and i was like oh that's fucking rad the last time I saw off of their heads in Albany, there was some family there and they had like what I would probably say is like a six year old with a little mohawk and he was up there dancing nice. along and everyone did a good job of protecting him from anyone like in the circle pit and everything like that. But 
It also oh, yeah. required work on my yeah. part to pay attention to their six year old. Nowadays, you see like four generations like going to shows. I went to Iron Maiden with my wife like nine, ten years, even longer than that, and uh, there's like a whole family sitting on a blanket, like a grandfather, like parents, and like small kids and pampers. So the last time I saw Iron Maiden was probably 20 years ago and it was during the whole Napster shit and Iron Maiden was like fuck y'all download everything we have download right. it for free we don't give a fuck learn our, learn our songs buy our concert tickets drink beer buy our t-shirts and then do it again right and every time we come back because you've downloaded all of our shit get the fuck down here rock the fuck out and then buy our t-shirt to remember the fucking day you had. Now that's stage banter. Okay. Yeah, it was fucking brilliant. <laughs> that's stage banter. <laughs> yeah, that spoke to me. It spoke yeah. to me. It almost made it for the fact that I missed Motorhead because I thought Dio would open, but somehow like Motorhead opened and I got there late and I had to see Dio instead. Oh, no. Yeah. Rainbow in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so fuck yeah, fuck no. Jay, you've listened to the show before. You yes. know, fuck yeah, fuck no. I haven't. Yeah, you've never listened to this. <laughs> I can be All like right. long, long time listener, first time caller. Uh, you are, you are probably one of the fifteen people that listen every uh, episode. Hey, I after the first episode, what did I do? I called you up and said that is the funniest shit I've ever heard in a long time. You hear that, Ralph? Oh. He thought we were funny. Uh, I thought it was. Uh, I, I don't it, believe it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 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 oh, it's, bullshit. You know, it, it's interesting because, like, in the very beginning, I would message everybody that like this shit was out, but I'm trying to let it organically grow. So, and in fact, uh, we're gonna move forward, and we're gonna we're gonna add Ralph's uh, Ralph's name to the bill too, because uh, fuck it. He's a he's a permanent co-host. He's not congratulations. A co-host. Fuck it, thanks. Yeah, I guess I've been temping. Like, yeah, I mean, I've kind of treated you like an intern. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely treat me like an intern. That's that's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry. What do you want me to do? You want me to like rub your taint or something? <laughs> you on the three cent Spotify page, yeah. <laughs> like, well, I'll give you stock yeah. options once I got stocks. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm in. Once, once we go public, I'll give you all the stock options you want. <laughs> all right. Earlier you mentioned the people like standing there with their arms crossed. See it a lot in Philadelphia, the Philadelphia horseshoe. Is it ever okay to tell people to dance, move forward, or sing along? Three, two, one. Fuck yeah. no. Yeah. Right, yeah, that was answer. yeah. Uh, Jay says yes. Rat says yes. Jay, what the fuck? No, I mean, if you want to tell people to, you know, run around Circle Pit or, hey, this one's for Circle Pit or, hey, you know the words, sing along. I mean, you don't want to ask people like, hey, please sing along this. You want to ask them. <laughs> hey, guys, can we play another one? Sing along to this. No, but I mean, if you want to like say that, you know, get it going, it doesn't work. Well, fuck it. But well, I think you kind of hit on to it. Like, remember you said reading the room? Yeah. Of course, you remember you said that. It's it's about whether like it sounds like you're bitching and complaining and being plaintive, or you're just encouraging what they already want to do. To me, it always just smacks of asking people to laugh at a comedy show. We're like, kids, can you do well on the test? No, motherfucker. You can ask <laughs> us to do well on the test all fucking day. <laughs> you know, can you? It's like asking a girlfriend to love you. <laughs> Banging even if I was a worm, wall that doesn't exist. Would they love me even if I was a worm? <laughs> no. Why would they love me if you were a worm? Do girls <laughs> love worms and I miss this? Maybe. I mean, I read How to Eat a Fried Worm. You know, the second book that was How to Beat Up a Girl in that series. Ooh. Wow. Or How to Fight a Girl, something along that lines. Hard left. Yeah, <laughs> I read it. Sure. I think he went up dating the girl, which I'm not sure is a really good message. How to fight a girl? Ooh. Yeah, so like how to fight a girl, how to beat a girl. Hold on, 
I I I have to, I have to like look this shit up to make sure I'm just not fucking like imagining it and like I'm some sort of misogynistic <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Scott's like I loved reading books about fighting women. <laughs> <laughs> It was it was a good childhood. Yeah. They took to fight my a books girl. away. Wow. Yeah. Is that the same book? Yeah, is the same it's author? Yeah, yeah, that's it. What were you reading, or what did you just make up in your head? <laughs> it's the same person that wrote How to Eat Fried Worms when Billy Forrester was on his way to winning a bet with Alan Phelps by eating 15 juicy worms. Billy uses wins to buy a mini bike and soon trade them in for a trail bike. Wait, hold on. Now Alan and his friend vow to get even with Billy. Together with the help of Joe's sister, Rena, and her friend Amy, the foursome cook up and he schemed to humiliate Billy. Immediately, Billy prepares to fight to even the score. His trail bike and his honor are at stake. All he needs is a crafty cohort. But what, hap what if she happens to be a girl? Oh, my God. Sounds like you read the back of like an 80s VHS box. Like his reputation is at stake. <laughs> oh my God. Like, yeah, how dare he like a girl? Like, oh, it's like how to own the fact that you dig a chick. There's some montage music in the background of that. Oh. Uh, but I read it. It was the He Man Woman Eaters Club. So <laughs> Can't it's like it. Paul uh, Al Bundy, like No Man. <laughs> That's like the book they would all read as their Bible. <laughs> I heard the third book was called How to Incite a Riot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is, is, it, is it ever okay to uh, ask the crowd to bring you a drink? Three, two, one. Fuck no. I'm still on oh, yeah. with you guys. Wrath, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. I'm an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I don't. I don't ask. I demand. Anyway. You demand. So, how about you, Jay? I mean, I've done it before, and you know I've done it before. So. I know you have. I was like, this is where the part comes in, is like where I you use my stage banner as the butt of one of your jokes. No, I and mean, like you said, hey, free drinks. Fuck it. Free drinks. And a lot of the times I would ask somebody I know who I know would just go get a beer for me real quick, or a lot of times we'd have a cooler. So, I mean, somebody, I'm sorry to all the venues that I brought a cooler illegally. <laughs> to your venue, by the way. But no, I mean, hey, if somebody will buy you a beer or a shot, you know, cool. You know, it but makes not, them feel important, I think, too. Like, not not to, like, pander or patronize or anything, but they, they feel like they're part of the show. And it's it's kind of fun. Yeah. It involvement. It's, a, it's a bit of, you know. So... The best beverage-oriented stage banter I ever heard was recently at Camp Punksylvania. And I hope they get these fuckers on here soon. Uh, Coffee with Lions. Yes, they're fucking cool. So they were the first band the first day. Was it the first day? Pretty sure it was the first day. So it's like, I'm there like two hours in hand, I'm walking, walking around drinking my own beers, because you can bring coolers of beers, and chatting up the merch vendors and then they get there and they're like 20 minutes where they have to play and they have like five cases of beer and they're just lining them up on the railings and announcing that they have free beer and they're getting all the people who are camped out nice. to come down all the people up in the woods and they're getting everyone to come down and get free beer which I thought was perfect because I was passing out free beer koozies so I started putting beer koozies in every one of their beers Nice. I picked them up and I put beer koozies on and nice. I was like but like while they're doing it they're also like talking and making jokes and it was non-stop for like 20 minutes prior to their set until they like swell to a decent crowd nice which is hard to do for like noonish on like the first day oh yeah that's owning your room that's not even reading a room yeah, that's yeah. yeah they, they totally took control and I was like I, I I'll be honest. I was fully unaware of these uh, this band, but I'm like, oh, I'm fucking all in on this, and it was fucking great. Fucking really? fucking Coffee cool. with lions. Yeah, yeah, they're from like York. York yeah, York, York but, like, so, like melodic hardcore. You dig yeah, they're it. fucking yeah. awesome. Are they from uh, York, York, Pennsylvania. Yeah, mm. yeah. I was born there. 
Nice. <laughs> so you understand. Yeah. I don't. I uh. I I, I, have, I have talked to their singer John multiple times about getting him on here. He's like not being able to make the uh the dates work, but hopefully soon. Gotta do it. So, uh, so like Rath here now is 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 wearing a t shirt. Billy Bats and the Main Men. You're yes. you're wearing a black t shirt. I'm 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 wearing a shirt. Uh, symbol. Our shirt stage banter. Absolutely. Absolutely, they are. So, is it ever okay to wear your own fucking band's T-shirt on stage? Absolutely. Really? Explain Not. that. And I'm worth saying this because have you? How many videos have you seen where you see a guy, one of the guys in the band, especially if it's live footage, and you'll see them wearing a shirt of the band that they're in? And I was like, if you're on tour, sometimes you know, laundry day ain't coming, and you're just like, man, I need a clean shirt and. I'm going to cut the sleeves off of one of mine. That's the only time. That's, that's the only that's time. Our all, that's our stipulation every time. You have to be out if of all on of tour shirts. And you're out of clothes and you, you don't I mean, have a stick to be out. If your shirt's badass enough, I mean, and if you like it, cool. But I mean, then, I mean, shameless self-promotion. I mean, I wear it to the grocery store. Like, I'll wear mine out just to see people like, hey, I've seen that band. And I'm like, yes. I'm sure you have. <laughs> if you had I, you know, I, I know the good to know. that band. Hey, I, I wore <laughs> a mask from Hell and Dead for like six years, so no one's ever going to recognize me. Right. Batman. I put on my Wolverine or Batman that. mask. <laughs> I've worn a Call and Dead shirt around the house. I think I right. made it to the grocery store. Yeah. Right. I, I, I never wear any. No, I do wear my record label t shirts around. And I wore them on stage. In fact, Chris made fun of me once for wearing it for like uh, when we were like doing photos for our like uh, promo for the album. So of course, you wore that. I was like, "Damn right, I would." <laughs> Why wouldn't I? I'm like, I have to promote for the bands that I that have put their trust in me. I mean, the label gave me the shirt. What do yeah. you expect me to do? <laughs> I, I was like, I, I don't know why every band doesn't buy five shirts from me, one for each band member, so that they can have shirts to wear. I suppose if I were a real yeah. we'd give them shirts. <laughs> have I to make a little more that profit. Would be. Wait for the for, stock for release. Wait for the stock <laughs> releases. <laughs> yeah. All right. Is it ever okay to be self-deprecating? Three, two, one. Fuck no. Yeah. Yeah. You can be self-deprecating to yourself in the band in private, like, oh, we played like shit. Or damn, we fucking suck. But to like the crowd go, oh man, we fuck no, nah, don't say that shit. Nope. Now I, I have don't heard you say anymore. that you're an awkward front man when you're on stage. But it came across as endearing. Like you were opening up to them. It wasn't like you were saying, oh, I fucked up there. You're like, hey. Da, da, da. I was like, eh. Sorry, I'm struggling to think what to say. I'm kind of awkward at this. But it was like, it was honest. Like it wasn't like, some bands complain about like not singing well or performing well. You were just being really honest. It was almost like, Oh, am I in a, a group therapy session here? I mean, I've definitely called myself a fucking idiot. Well, I'm you staying, are. You know, I, exactly. <laughs> so, right. So it's like self-deprecating or just, like you said, group therapy. <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't, it's not even mostly like self-deprecating. You'd be like, man, I'm awkward as fuck as this shit. Yeah, yeah but yeah. Like, it, it, was just, it was just honesty. Like, I, I could see how someone could see it that way, but I heard it and I was like, oh, he's just, being honest about who he is. And I, I I found that to be like if I was a kid in the crowd, I would have been like, oh. He gets stage fright or he struggles to be up there, but he's up there anyway. Mm -hmm. That means I can do that as well. Yeah. Like I would have found that empowering. Right. Or he's that just happens. in an emo band. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jay Jersey, does look alkaline trio. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> your your oh. hatred for trio. It's okay. I, I, I tried. 
I know. I tried and I just, tried. Yeah. I put right. you in amazing seats for Alkaline Trio, and it still didn't work. I, I just don't like them. I can't I help it. Yeah, if they can't. came to me to do a live album, I would say no. Somehow I doubt that because that album would sell and make a lot of money. They did. They did a couple of years I know, ago. No, but I still might say I no. When they were when they were recording those live albums, which was mid right now. Wildly I will mid say no. Line in the sand. Come okay. at me, alkaline trio. <laughs> Let me say no to you. I'll be done. Oh. I dare you. I will say no to you. Yes, come in. <laughs> it's alkaline trio. Oh, thank you, child. <laughs> It's not how going to you. It's just a uh, raw <laughs> brownie mix with that. Uh... All right, good shit. Thank you, kid. You're welcome. It'll uh, be done soon. All right, thank you, kid. Well, kind of not right. All right. Sweet. Brownies. Brownies. This is how you do shit. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about brownies. There was to, a place uh... called Beer and Brownies in Tampa. They had shows at for a little while. Shut the fuck up. There was a place called <laughs> Beers and Brownies. Beer and Brownies. Yeah. Fuck. Did not, I don't think it survived long, but uh, yeah, they had a couple shows there. One of these days, I'll open my own venue when I don't have any children. <laughs> you know, I always want to do that, but I'm always afraid of getting glued to a, a spot and like having to be there. And like, I know you know you have your team and your people yeah. to, to do it, but I don't, I, I don't know. I don't trust anyone anyway. No, there is that <laughs> issue, and like then there's the issue just like. My my kids are at school all day. If, yeah. if I'm at work only in the evenings, because most clubs do shows in the evenings, I've heard. Mm -hmm. Then when right, I see right. my kids, right? Like it's one of the reasons I haven't gone back to like waiting tables and stuff. Because there's a part of me that says, "Oh, I can just wait tables at a nice restaurant and pull in more money than I made as a teacher down south and be good." Mm -hmm. Do my stage banter at the tables. I yeah. actually. <laughs> I, I work uh, off and on at a uh, restaurant, and, and the manager told me that I had to cut back on my stage banter with the tables that I was uh, causing other workers to work too hard. So, <laughs> but we, we, we pull our tips, and everyone works together, and I just get in good conversations because apparently I like to talk. You never. I've heard. I've heard. When I was listening to the Paul Stanley stage banter, YouTube suggested a. Uh, 15 minute video on how to do stage banter lesson. And I watched it. And at one point, they gave us their go to's, the things that every band can say if they don't know what else to say. And I would like the three of us to kind of talk about them and see are these cliches? Do they matter? Should they be said or should they like just be given the graveyard? Um, when I've taught fifth grade, I used to do a, uh, a word graveyard because I would ask kids to like, there are certain words you just need to die. Good. It's past the point. You're so grade. good. I don't want to hear you say you're happy anymore. I want to say you hear you say you're ecstatic. I don't want to hear you say you're sad. I want to just hear you say that you are, um, oh my God, I don't have a word for it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. Give me a good synonym for sad. It's better than fucking sad. Oh, morose. There we go. Morose. Thank you. Morose. <laughs> yeah, so we, we, we would do word graveyards, and I would march around with, like, uh, what, what was the hoodie they had uh, in uh, fucking uh, Princess Bride? Yeah, the black. Bring out your dad. Yeah, but there was, that a, was, there, there that was, was a, a point where, like, uh, ah. The the, the 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 Dread Pirate Roberts was with Andre the Giant. He was like, oh, we had a wheelbarrow and some sort of like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some sort of robe. Anyway. So the first one was, how's the crowd tonight? Should we say that? Is it okay? Is it not okay? I mean, if you can tell they're doing well. You know, you don't want to make a losing bet. And it's also how you phrase it too, though. I mean, you, how are you doing tonight? <laughs> hey, real quick, like how y'all doing tonight, or something? Or just, <laughs> how's the crowd doing tonight? You should say it just like. How are you? <laughs> That's the Paul Stanley way, right? Paul Stanley. Paul Stanley. Oh, yeah. 
How about to be back? I mean, sorry. Good to be back for those of you that can't hear me. I'm doing it in my NPR voice now. <laughs> it's good to be, be back, back, okay? I don't know. We're in such small bands. Would we ever say good to be back? Yeah, you know, like no. how how long you've been gone? I guess. I mean, like, okay, if you're on County, we hit we weeks hit Birmingham. Ago. We hit Birmingham once a year, so like it's you know, we'll say that. Yeah, like that's that's decent. But if you're just playing another local show, I mean, if you could, you could, you could say it, and it would be weird. <laughs> Every time I play Will's Pump, <laughs> I mean, see, you could say that though. You specifically. Oh, I specifically. Yeah, I yeah. Been in a while. Right. But if I was like, you know, well, <laughs> I don't even know where I play often anymore. How place. about great to be here for the first time? No, okay. It's really okay. We've never played here before. This is cool. It's kind of, kind of, you know, casual. Yeah, that's not what it said. This casual. is great to yeah, be here right. for the first time. This is the exact fucking phrase. <laughs> Go to's. Can't change your wrath to make it acceptable. <laughs> okay, this isn't like the, the fuck yeah, fuck no, I can't, can't have it. Now, now, it's exactly <laughs> what it says. <laughs> Thanks Great to, to the bar staff. The first time. Thanks to the bar staff. Yeah, I always. This one, how you would say it though? Yeah, this you, one, and I have a cheat sheet. You know, I, I've got the Scott thing. Why say it on stage? Yeah, like fuck you. Just say it to their face. Like yeah. you're 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 yeah. doing it for for what the attention? Like that's kind of lame. Yeah, just literally go to them and say thank you. Like unless you know All the bartender, shows, like, I would pre-tip them. You know, if you're like homies, you'd be like, "Yo, <laughs> thanks, Kelly at the bar." <laughs> yep. Like you know, like, shout dead, out to my girl Kelly. Privilege, plots. I would walk into places. I'd get my three free beer drink tickets, and I'd order my first beer. And I'd give them 20 bucks. I'm like, what's that? I was like, your drinks are free, but your service is not. Thank you. I'm sure my other bandmates will also tip you later after they've had enough beer. I'm the designated driver, so I'm tipping you now. What a sweetheart. You always pre-tip. Yeah. Well, so you don't get too drunk and forget. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and so you get served faster than everyone else. That, I mean, they know what you're about, so yeah. And they it want works. you to come back, so I guarantee you, you could play a, a, a dank ass show and no one comes out. Mm -hmm. But if your band runs up a bar tab and you tip, the bar staff will tell the uh, manager to bring that fucking band back again, right? So when you're opening up for a band in your local town or you're got on a show, just make sure you tip well. And even if you don't drink the bucket drinks, you buy them and dump them out. And make yeah. sure that the bar knows that whenever they want to show, they book your band, and you're gonna fucking like make sure that the bartenders are taken care of. Not wrong. That's why the sidebar in Baltimore would say like, "Hey, I know you guys just played on Tuesday, and today is Wednesday, but you mind coming up again tonight? We had a band cancel." I was like, "Why us?" I was like, between the three of you, you, the bartenders make more money than they do with the rest of the people in the bar. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. We shall be there. Fuck it. You ever thank the sound guy? No. Like, eh, like I said, like do it off stage. Like as soon as you get off, be like, hey man, thanks. That sounded fucking great. Like I don't even know what it sounds like though. Like I even know what it sounds like to me. Who, you know what? Who cares? Thank your fucking sound guy. Yeah. Who fucking cares? You tell him it sounded fucking great and you get the fuck off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I've told the sound guy in person, like after a show before, like a couple times we've played like Wills or something. Mm -hmm. I've always, I was like, oh, dude, I was like, freaking sounded really cool. But I mean, most of the time it's, you know, it sounds all right. It sounds good. But I guess the reverse would be complaining about the sound. No. No. And we've talked about that. Don't ever fucking do that. Nope. Like you're fucking. Sounds like shit up shit. here. That is a way no, to like, get you banned from. Yeah, me. you're a piece of shit. It's just, it's just disrespectful. Like yeah. What if somebody like literally? I mean, it's like getting heckled. Like if somebody just started yelling that you sound like shit. I mean, like even if you do, <laughs> like fine, but leave me alone. <laughs> like I feel you. I feel you. Like I remember, uh, I think I think it was my first show with uh, with with my new band, and 
we didn't do a sound check. And then we got up there and I couldn't hear Dick and I didn't have the muscle memory. And then they couldn't hear Dick with each other. And I was like, oh, this is just going to be Dick. But it wasn't inherently the sound guy's fault because we never did a sound check. You right. offered. And like, man, we just, declined. Just do it. Like, just, just, just play the fucking show. Yeah. No, we did. It was, I don't, you know, fucking terrible. Like, I've, I've I was fucking terrible. We've all played so many shows game. that sound like complete shit. What what's one more? He says this is introduce your band members. Jay, have you ever introduced your band members? The last I no, I didn't introduce it, but I did say thank you and I named all of you at the last show I played. But no, I don't know. Introducing that's like something that like Aerosmith or like Yeah. <laughs> when you're when you're in like that ginormous arena and they're like it's like that old Aqua Teen joke where like, and on bass guitar. Exactly. <laughs> now, the exception I might give would be someone like Rath who has different people backing him up. Like if you're a front guy and you have different people in a in your band. And most of the time I make jokes about it. I won't say their real name. Like I'll say like Tom Ladong. <laughs> or like <Jim laughs> Hodges. You know what I mean? Like oh. You know, just make stupid shit up. And that's, I think that's acceptable. Because then no one knows what's going on. I'm surprised somebody in porn has never, ta has not taken that name yet. <laughs> Tim Liddell. Tom Liddell. <laughs> and then making a joke. I mean, I guess jokes are okay, but I guess it depends on the joke. I'm here. My life is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even if a joke is terrible, it's it's okay. I used to, like, way, 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 way long time ago, I used to tell jokes when, like, somebody would be tuning, because I just was like, we're all just standing up here, I'm like, hey, why do women love Jesus? Because he's hung like this. <laughs> Something stupid like that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, stupid dad jokes and things like that are, are good. I mean, I saw a band at Fest recently, and I was dying inside for them because you've only got like a 15 or 25 minute set. It was, it's pretty, let's say 20 minutes, 20 minutes set at best. And after the first song, the guitarist broke a string and didn't have a backup guitar. And then he had to change the string. And then the other guy in the band and the drum machine, they were, they were, they were trying to cover it, but I'm like, I can just hear the frustration because I've been fucking irritated as fuck oh yeah and i sat there waiting because i really dug the band and i was like i'll wait but i can see if i didn't dig the band already then i just walk outside and just or go to the bathroom or walk away i was like you're gonna take five minutes to change a string that's like five minutes of my life like your job is to entertain yeah whether you play all your songs or whether you do anything like so if you're not entertaining you're kind of just what are you doing? What are you doing? You know, and they tried, and right. they, they did their best effort. It's just that's a long time to change your guitar string, right? Start taking improv classes. Improvs, you know. You improv. I mean, give me a subject and <laughs> situation. So, Jay, you had a swan song in Calling Dead. And in that swan song, live for the first several years, we, there would be a brief pause. By brief, I mean as long as I fucking wanted to make it. And you would talk. And I've heard recordings of what you said. And then when we recorded it for the, like, the studio and you came up with a, uh, a very Descendants-ish cash phrase, and that's what's out there. But I want to hear what you would do now without the catchphrase so i have the said song Ooh. and i'm gonna play I it say, i was like can you please play it real quick and jog my memory I oh, know i'm just gonna play it you'll have about 20 seconds before the break occurs and then you're gonna have to have like 30 seconds to fill of just talking but you can't talk about any of the cliches we've talked about you can't talk about the songs about all that i don't think you know what the song's about anyway uh you might know and you're just going to fill it up like you did old school style. And I need some emotion. 
I need to feel it like you have a thousand people watching you or like a normal show, five people watching you. Much, yeah, I'd say five is a lot more accurate. <laughs> I was actually like there's five people watching you, but you <laughs> like had a, a couple uh couple of uh, talls of beers and uh you don't you never watch for guys for shots, but just but put 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 your heart into it. <laughs> Modern chemistry sleep is now optional. Go eat your Wheaties. Welcome to Dele- Wiener Schnitzel. Having two, two large Cokes, two large Sorry, Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. There you go. <laughs> it's not ready yet. Keep going. <laughs> I gotta keep going. <laughs> Don't tip <Yeah>. your fenders. <laughs> yeah, keep going. I think you have to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> <Four>. <laughs> You know, there are three versions of that song on our Spotify account. Nice. And none of them are the version that's on the seven inch. <laughs> I'm sorry. There are four versions. There's one that was on the first CD. There is one that was on the 12 inch that I just played. And there's two from the live recording that's on the seven inch, but neither of them are correct. One I did as a single, and the other one I did when I released the full album. And I didn't select the right one either time. And they have different stage banter in between them. Both the two different <laughs> live versions the are both are all the same. They, they both are. have different stage banter that's on the seven inch. Because we cut stage banter. So like there was a lot of stage banter on one of them. There's like one of the tracks, the, like the song is literally like 40 seconds longer than the other live version because of the amount of stage banter. <laughs> and there's the one that's shorter, and then there's the one that's on the fucking record. Wow. It's 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 the song that everyone's gonna always like be can I'm sorry, everyone is. Uh the five people that listen to it regularly <laughs> will be confused about like what it's supposed to actually sound like. Like it'll get to the break and they'll all like start like trying to follow along like they're quoting a movie and it'll be all different and they'll be like looking at the fuck. That's fucking awesome. Or he might just be like, This motherfucker really likes the descendants. <laughs> <laughs> It, it reminds me of like when I was younger, there was this Misfits tape that went all through my town. And I was so sure that, you know how in, um, when when Minor Threat covered Stepping Stone, it went from like soft to loud? Yeah. In the, in the recording. You know that, Jay. I don't know about Wrath, but Jay definitely knows what I'm talking about. But there was a Misfits song, and I, and I want to say it was Last Caress, but I could just be like not remembering but it did the same thing. But whatever Dick Kid was like recording it on their like dual tape cassette, they just changed the volume on it. But I thought that's how it went my entire life for like five or six years <laughs> because I had that on my tape. My buddy Fane had it on his tape. Dan had it on his tape. Keith had it on his tape. Sturge had it on his tape. Everybody had it on their tape. But wow. we don't know where the tape came from. It was this Misfits mixtape that just spread through the town like fucking forever. I miss tape trading. Oh, oh, yeah. Tape trading was so great. That was the best stage banter. <laughs> tape what did it say about you when you put up stage tape banter? No together? stage banter at all, just trading tapes. But that's <laughs> stage banter. Is it not? Am I all right, people? Scott, not everything in the world is going to be <laughs> stage banter now. Fuck you! you fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck stage banter. Here's the tape. Thanks for coming <laughs> out. Stage banter! <laughs> Like what, you announce something before you hand somebody a tape you made. Well, I think the last uh, recording we did, we we discovered side stage banter. Huh. Right? Like, what do you say? Like, because after a show's over and you've got to go to the merch table and talk to people. Oh, 
That's when it gets awkward. Banter. What is that post stage banter? Not side stage. Post stage. Awkward. Yeah, that's when it gets awkward. awkward. That's what it's yeah. called. I've always struggled with that one too. Great set, man. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's why I did and it. And the dead silence after that. You say thank you. And then it's nothing. What, are, yeah. what else are you going to say? Yeah. What was your favorite song? I don't want to know. <laughs> Most of the time, I don't fucking know. So I'm just like, because a lot of bands you see for the first time, especially playing like local around the area, unless you're like a big fan of the band, you know, a lot of times yeah. you're seeing for the first time. Like, I don't know what the song is. Yep. No, I, I, I've tried when I meet bands after their shows to keep my interactions with them under three minutes. Because I know they're tired. They just got done playing and they have other people to talk to, probably friends they care about. I want to send my niceness. Right. Maybe pass out a business card if I'm interested in recording their shit later. And then I want to get out the fuck out of their way because... I, I don't want to be like a clingy, oh, I really dug your shit, and let me just hang out with you. So, thank you everyone for fucking being here. Thank you for listening, and fuck you because I said they fuck you for some reason. <laughs>